Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. New software that can turn any tablet or cell phone into a hardware device for your sim? Coming up next on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. In today's episode, we will first showcase the application in both GA aircraft as well as the 737. After that, we'll go over the developer's website, as well as the cost for the application. And finally, we'll go over the Simbox server application for your PC. Now, I've been in close contact with the developer over the past couple weeks. For full transparency, I was supplied a copy of this application for review. So while we're going through the video today, if you have any suggestions or comments for the developer, please leave those down below in the comments section. If the video helps you out today, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the sim, and I'll bring everybody back when we are in our GA aircraft. Welcome back, everyone. For today's demonstration in the GA aircraft, I chose a Cessna 152 with the JP Logistics mod. Links for that will be down in the description. So as you can see on our tablet here, as well as a cell phone, we are not connected to our simulator. So to connect the Simbox application to our simulator, we first need to turn on the server application in our toolbar menu. We can find the Simbox toolbar icon, give that a left click, and now you can see our tablet and cell phone have connected to the network. Before we move any further in this demonstration, I just want to say that I am having issues with my tablet and it keeps connecting and disconnecting to the network, there's also a ton of lag in this tablet here. The only reason why I'm going to be using it for this demonstration is it's easier for me to show you the different menus, but as far as the functionality, I'll be using my cell phone here to show you the full functionality of the application. So with that out of the way, the first thing that we need to do is to select our aircraft profile. We have a couple different profiles coming, so the 787 as well as the CRJ line will also be added to our custom profiles here. So because we're using a GA aircraft, we're going to select GA profile. At the very top, we'll have all the different menus that we're able to adjust. Now, keep in mind that these menus are going to change based upon the aircraft profile that you choose. So now let's go through each of the menus at the top and show you their functionality. At the top of the autopilot menu, we have heading, altitude, and vertical speed. At the bottom of this menu, we can turn on the autopilot, activate heading hold, navigation, approach hold, altitude hold, and vertical speed mode. To the right of the vertical speed, we have our up and down buttons. This is going to adjust our vertical speed up or down. These buttons will not adjust the altitude or our heading. So the next question you should have is, well, how do we adjust the altitude and the heading? To do that, we're going to come over here to the settings cog at the very top, and we have two options in here. We're going to enable the virtual knob feature. Now if we go back to our autopilot menu, we can see at the bottom, we have a virtual knob slider that we can use for our heading and altitude. If we switch from our heading to our altitude, you'll notice that there's a little button down here that goes away. That little button down in the lower left hand corner is our sync button for our heading bug. The only limitation that we have to this is if the aircraft itself does not have that functionality, you will not be able to use that in the autopilot. For instance, we're using the Cessna 152 today, and if we go down to our heading bug, you can see that we can adjust it but we don't have the availability to press in or out on the knob to sync the heading bug. Because of that, we will not be able to use the sync function on our autopilot. And there you go, there's our first disconnect on the tablet. Again, not a fault with the software or the developer, this is a issue with my tablet. So now let's go ahead and see if there's any lag between activating our autopilot and what we get on the screen. If I hit the autopilot button, it is pretty much instantaneous. Heading, instantaneous. Nav, perfect. Glide slope, altitude hold. Works beautiful. There is no lag between my cell phone and the uh, SIM itself. So now that I've showed you the autopilot panel, let's move on to the radio panel. And here we have a couple different options. We have COM1, COM2, and we have NAV1 frequencies. 
Now one thing that I would like to see is the availability to use a NAV2 frequency, especially if we're doing some VOR flying. We really need to have several different areas in which we can store our frequencies. Now to adjust any of the standby frequencies, all we need to do is to tap on the standby that we want to adjust. The top slider here is going to adjust our small numbers to the right of the decimal. The bottom slider is going to adjust our larger or whole numbers to the left of the decimal. Let's go ahead and show you this on our cell phone real quick, just to show you that there really is no lag here. If I go to standby frequency, yeah, if we hit the swap feature here, it switches very, very quickly. And I'm sure you could see that on the monitor as well. Speed at which this operates is just fantastic. I, I can't say enough for this. So let's go ahead and take a look at the lights menu. In the lights section, this is going to give us a general light set for GA aircraft. So some GA aircraft may have more options for lights and some may have less options for lights. But this is going to give you all of the main light functions that you're going to need. So let's go ahead and try this out. We turn on the beacon. So the other really neat thing about this software is that I can use multiple devices using various different menus on those devices. My cell phone here, I'm in the autopilot section so I can activate any of the autopilot functions while using my tablet to adjust all of my lights. So if you have a couple tablets and a couple cell phones, well, you can pretty much set everything up so you don't have to switch between menus. It's nice. Thumbs up for the developer on that one. And if we take a look in the settings menu, we do have one other option, and this is to enable our haptics. What this will do is give us a little vibration when we are using the virtual knob at the bottom. Personally, I don't like to use that, so I just leave that off. So that's pretty much the demonstration in our GA aircraft. When I bring everybody back, we'll be in the 737. See you back shortly. Welcome back. We're now in the 737. So let's take a look at the Simbox application and check out the 737 profile. Now keep in mind that if you do have a connection issue, to make sure that you go up to the top and that your Simbox icon has been highlighted. So now the first thing I need to do on our Simbox application here is hit change and we're going to switch to the Boeing 737. So let's take a look at the autopilot menu first. Here you can see we have a lot more options to choose from than we did in our GA aircraft. The application is still going to work the exact same, so to adjust any of these at the top, we're just going to click on it and use our virtual knob at the very bottom. So now I want to switch over here to my cell phone real quick so I can eliminate any issues that the tablet has with connection to the simulator right now. So if I want to activate um, heading select, let's go ahead and press the heading button and see what happens. I don't know if you could tell, but on your screen, it, it was almost instantaneous. That button is pushing in. Let's check out the VNAV. Yep, that does the same thing. LNAV. Wow. Approach. Yeah, as you can see here, this is very, very responsive. And the virtual knob is very quick. So you shouldn't really have any issues using the virtual knob. So now let's jump over to our radio panel and see what we have available to us in there. So it looks like we have the same panel. We have COM1, COM2, and our nav frequencies. Let's just go ahead and see how responsive that is. So I'm going to use my cell phone again, go to the radio panel, and let's go ahead and change. Wow. If you take a look at the radio on the screen, you can see that it is moving very quickly. And now if I want to swap, it swaps instantaneous. So that is, that's really cool. I really like to see that. All right, so that takes care of the radio panel. Let's move over to the light panel. So let's go ahead and do this again with our phone because you probably noticed a little bit of lag there. So let's do this here. Any collision, wing lights, wheel well lights, perfect. All right, so that takes care of the light section. Let's move over to transponder. And if we take a look down at the transponder, let's switch over to transponder here. And the way that we're going to use the transponder page is the exact same as all of the other pages. So we're going to click on what we want to adjust. So we're going to click on the actual transponder selector and we're going to use 
the virtual knob at the bottom to move that. And if we look on the screen, yep, it's it's so responsive. Now, if we want to adjust the squawk code, you're not going to click squawk code. You're going to click on the knob that you would adjust your squawk code with. You can see that we have two virtual knobs that would populate. So we can adjust our squawk code here. Go to this knob. All right, so that's going to take care of our transponder menu. Let's move over to the APU menu. In our APU menu, we pretty much only have one setting here, and that is to be able to turn on or start the APU. So to start the APU, we're going to hit down. That'll put us in the on position one more time, and it now starts the APU. All right, so that pretty much takes care of the application on your tablet or your smartphone. Now we're going to move into the developer's website and show you how to navigate around there. But more importantly, we're going to talk about the cost. We'll come back at you in just a moment. Welcome back, everyone. So we're now taking a look at the developer's website because I did find this website is the probably the most user friendly website that I've ever used, especially when it comes to the document section. So let's go through this real quick. The home page of the website is going to give us some basic information about the software itself. Pretty much everything that I already went through and showed everybody on the screen. Now, the other thing that they offer is a DIY project so that you can create a physical knob to use with the application. This is something I've never seen anybody else do with their software. And they give all of the instructions, programming information, everything you need in the document section. We'll take a look at that here shortly. Scrolling down on the home page will take us to the profile section. So this application is not only available to use on Microsoft Flight Simulator, but we can also use this on X-Plane 11 and 12. So this will give us some of the configurations of aircraft that we have available to us on the application. If we keep scrolling down a little bit more, you can see we have a DIY knob tutorial video here. But let's keep scrolling down here a second because I know everybody who wants to know how much is the software? At the very top under choose your variant, we can either choose no knob or to use with the DIY knob. So I can only assume there are some software differences between the two selections. Now, one thing that I would like to see maybe as an add on, if we purchase the no knob functionality, it would be nice if we had an option that we could upgrade if we want to use the knob in the future. But in any case, if we're just using this for Microsoft Flight Simulator, we are going to be at $29 for the application. If you want to use the knob version, it comes out to $39. At the very bottom of the home page will give us the links for either our iOS download or our Android download. The other thing that I really like about this developer is that you can download as many downloads as you want to as many devices as you want, and there's no change in price. The only thing you are paying for is the server application to go on your main PC. So now let's take a look at the docs page, and this is probably the most important part of the entire website here. I feel that this developer has put together the most comprehensive and user-friendly document section that I've ever seen in any software. So in the introduction, we'll give us some basic overview of how the SimBox application is going to interact with your Sim and your hardware devices. The software page will give us a brief overview of the software, as well as a great video down here below to show us the functionality of the application. Most of that I already went through at the beginning of this video. Below the video, we have two more options we can either choose the SimBox control or the SimBox client. The SimBox client is what's going to be on your hardware devices like your tablet or cell phone. The SimBox control is what is going to be on your main PC. So let's go ahead and take a look at the instructions for the SimBox control first. At the very top, it will explain to you what SimBox is and how it serves as a bridge between your smartphone app and the simulator. This will allow users to easily connect and communicate with the simulator to fetch and send data. Below that, we have several instructional chapters of this particular menu. Now, you can click on these individually, or at the very bottom, we can just select Next. This will go through every part of the download and installation process to install the SimBox application or server application on your PC. As you go through the different chapters here, you will see it is highly detailed 
and gives as much information as possible. It will even get into how to set up or add custom profiles. If we go all the way to the bottom, we can go to the plugin section. The plugin is going to be the most important part of this equation because that's what's going to connect the dots, so to speak, and make everything work with inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator. So after you get this installed, it's very important that you click install on the plugin here to add the toolbar icon inside the sim. If you're on X-Plane 11, I don't think you have to do that. Yeah, no plugins are available for X-Plane. You can go through each of these and it will be very, very descriptive. I don't think I need to put together a tutorial video of how to install this because the developer did such a fantastic job. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the very bottom of the tree over here on the left. And this is where the developer, I think, shines over a lot of other developers that are out there. If we go to the hardware section, here's where we're able to actually create the DIY knob that we can use for the application. They give us all of the 3D printing parts, the STL files. So if you don't have access to a 3D printer, you could always have somebody else go ahead and 3D print all of the STL files for you. It will then go into all the wiring that's going to be needed for the Arduino boards. It is very, very descriptive as to what you need to do and how to set it up. I think the, the next biggest part to this is the programming of it. And they give all of the information that you're going to need to set this up and to program that knob to be able to use with the application. All right, so that takes care of all of the documents and the website for the developer. If you have any questions on this section, please leave them down below in the comments section. So now let's move into the Simbox control application for your PC. When you first download the application, this is what you will have on your screen once the app fires up for the first time. So let's take a look at all the different menus down the side here and see what they do. We're first gonna start off with the settings tab. In this tab, this is where you're gonna use this to set up your USB device, which would be the DIY knob. Above the settings tab, you always wanna check for any updates. Now, I'm not sure if this happens or not, but one thing I would like to see is when there is an update, it would be really nice that if we saw that there was a little update icon or something up here on the main home page so that we knew there was an update. So for right now, I always suggest whenever you fire this up, go in and check for updates for the application. And look at that. Lo and behold, we have an update available. I'm not going to do that right now. Above the update section, we have the files section. Now, this section is going to be very helpful for those of you who are building the DIY knob. Here's where we can download all of the files that we're going to need for the programming of the Arduino. To do this, we're going to right click on our desktop, go down to new, select folder, call it whatever we want. And then over here in the files, we can hit select directory, pick that directory that we had just created on our desktop, and then hit save. Once that's done, you will see the knob file populate here, and this will give us all of the information that we're going to need to program the knob itself. The developer has really thought of everything to make this as user-friendly as possible, even in the DIY portion. Above the files, we have the document section. When we click on that, it will then open up a web browser to the documents menu or the documents tree. So if we have any issues or questions, we can just revert back to this. Above the documents tab, this is our license information. I'm not gonna click on that because it'll display my license, but here's where you would input your license information. Above the license information is the plugins. And this is what I was saying is probably the most important because this is what's gonna connect all the dots together and make everything work for us. Above that, we have all the different profiles that are available to us, and we also have the availability to add any custom profiles. So now let's go back up to the Home tab and take a look and see what we have in here. At the very top, this is what is going to tell us whether we are connected or not connected to the simulator, as well as any USB device that we had created. So once you spawn into the simulator, it's very important that you click on the application icon that is in the toolbar. Once that is done, you will see that you are now connected to the simulator. Below these two boxes, this is where we're going to be able to use this information with our client application on our devices. So we can also open a web browser up on our PC to use that as well. 
you're not really going to have touchscreen functionality unless you have a touchscreen. So most people are probably going to be using the Simbox application. If we click on this right here, it will open up the Simbox website to where we can download the application on our hardware devices. Once you have logged into your device, it is going to ask for your IP address. The IP address is located right down here underneath of this QR code. You also have the availability in the application on your device to take a picture of the QR code and it will automatically connect to the network. So here's where you may have a little hiccup while you are trying to connect your device to the network. If you have a firewall on your antivirus, I would highly recommend to disable the firewall or create an exception for your device so that you can use it with your PC. That is one of the first things that I ran into when I was trying to connect all this together. All right, so that's going to finish us up for today, everyone. If you have any questions, post them down below in the comments section, and I'll get right back to you. If you haven't done so, make sure to hit that subscribe, tickle on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight timer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.